the unavoidable effects of aging. Many of these are more than just skin deep. But today, doctors and researchers are finding new answers for many neurological problems that were once thought to be an inevitable part of getting older. These new answers are leading to lives that are longer and healthier. More and more people, as they are taking care of their health, will live longer. So the average lifespan of the individual is going to be longer than what it is now. I do a lot more than my mother did. My mom, she lived to be 97. Living here alone, what if I fell and got hurt? Who'd find me? Physicians and surgeons are collaborating like never before to create answers for some of medicine's toughest cases, Parkinson's disease, back pain, and stroke. Using both surgical and non-surgical treatments, many of the effects of these problems are being eliminated. With improvements in technology and improvements of techniques, it's a very reasonable option for people to improve their length of life and quality of life. I guess I look at this as my last hope to solve my problem. Three patients looking for answers. One place that will work toward a solution for each. Hold your hand out. Okay. What do you think of that? by the minds of medicine. This is their story. Hello, and welcome to Minds of Medicine. I'm Paul W. Smith, here at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital, where people of all ages come to improve their health and celebrate their well-being. It's also a place where neurologists and neurosurgeons are among the nation's best at the diagnosis and treatment of many difficult diseases, diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, issues that have been associated with aging. But doctors have learned that the roots of some of these problems began long before retirement. Started back when I was uh, in high school. And I noticed I played sports. And if I really exerted myself, I'd have to sit down and I'd be shaking and trembling. Okay, can you sign your name? Okay. And today is the 13th. I can't write anymore. Small tasks that I try to do around the house, it's very hard because of the tremors. Minute things as simple as brushing my teeth or eating is very difficult. Eating especially. A central tremor is uh, a disease that's not that well understood, um, where people develop uh, tremor usually later in life, although people can be affected at a very young age. Most people do fine with it and don't need uh, surgery, but some people have it to such a degree that they're unable to feed themselves uh, or shave or uh, write or do a lot of other things. Decades of living with a worsening problem known as essential tremor have kept Mr. Terry from doing many of the things we take for granted. Eating out or even shaving has become impossible. After exhausting every possible medical solution, he is left with one last option. A brain surgery that, if successful, could erase a disorder that has been a part of his life for more than 40 years. Well, we tried certain medications and they didn't work. He basically told me that with the deep brain stimulation that they said they had a 90 some percent positive reaction to it. And he felt that was a good candidate for it. 
Deep brain stimulation will be used to treat Mr. Terry's disorder. Using electrical impulses, Dr. Schwab and his team believe they can disrupt the electrical circuit that is creating this tremor. His neurologist is world-renowned movement disorders expert, Dr. Peter Lewitt. Well, tremor is uh, a circuit-related uh, problem. That is, uh, there's some oscillator, something that makes shaking happen at the brain level, and we want to intervene with that effectively by shutting off those signals without taking away normal functions. Uh, it is a bit mysterious, but we have some target zones in the brain where that can be enacted, and unfortunately, not everybody is a candidate for surgery, but for those who have failed medications and could benefit from this, this is a remarkable process. We need to get this electrode very precisely placed. If we're off three or four millimeters, it just doesn't work, or you get side effects, or you don't get good tremor control. But you know, the vast majority of patients have really significant success and a lot of relief of their problems. He had failed medical therapy. There are really two or three drugs uh, that are uh, known to be useful for this condition. Um, he didn't get adequate relief with those medications and his tremor was adversely affecting his life. Uh, he was unable to do the things he wanted to do. It's been so long for me since I could do those simple things and it'll change my life basically. It'll just be a whole different world for me. He'll have his life back. He will be able to join the family and family functions and not set off to the side or, you know, say I'm not going to go to dinner. Um, that's going to be a great thing. You did great. That's the hardest part of the day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll get you back in the brain. When we come back, see this incredible surgery and how doctors use another procedure to eliminate one woman's unbearable back pain. We'll return in a moment. If you'd like to watch episodes of Minds of Medicine at any time, go to henryford.com slash Minds of Medicine. These are the Minds of Medicine. This is their story. Two patients arrive at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital to undergo procedures that could significantly improve their lives. Ms. Pam Kenny hopes a spine surgery will help eliminate years of back pain. Her surgeon is Dr. Mike Shadid. She had a uh, disc problem, so she had a, a combination of problem at one segment. It could have started with the disc, the disc deteriorates or degenerates, then it uh, puts stress on the other joints and the ligaments become loose and the facet becomes loose and then and it progresses. A cascade of events that happens and it takes some time to get to that point. And once we get to that point, therapy does not work anymore, medical management does not work anymore. So you have to do something to stabilize that segment, and, and this is what we did. But the best way to treat people is to do the right diagnosis. Once you have the right diagnosis, I think we can tailor the right procedure for them. And the discogram did show the disruption of the disc at 4-5. I see. Okay. And the, the contrast actually went all over the place. It not, did not stay in the center. It really? It filled all the disc all around. I see. And once more to the left side, there's a tear there, which can explain some of the pain there. Okay. And the radiologist said it elicited the same pain like she usually have. Okay. So you think that's the pain? So I pain? think if we eliminate that, maybe we can control her pain. And this was what I discussed with her. I, I've, I'm confident this will work very well for her. I've had back pain for over seven years. Um, I had an automobile accident and had back pain as a result of that, had a surgery six years ago, and have had ongoing pain ever since. Hello, Miss Kenny. Hi, I'm Dr. Crotty. Pleased Dr. to meet Crotty. you. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. So how are you doing today? I exercised, you know, I went to the gym. I, you know, I stopped doing that because the pain just nagging. Um, just generally, all of the things that you do, gardening, you know, being out in the yard, swimming, um, golfing. A previous failed back surgery at a different hospital kept Pam from many of her normal activities. Before this surgery, she meets with her spine team, who will discuss her case. This includes physiatrist Dr. Nuala Krati. So what would you hope from the surgery? 
Um, Dr. Shadi is planning to do surgery with you. Right. What would your hope be? Um, well, from I would that? hope that it would help the pain. Okay. Um, and I would also hope that it would um, hope that it would help the weakness and and the numbness in your legs as well. In my legs as well. Yes. Okay. Great. After Pam underwent tests and her case was reviewed by the spine clinic, Dr. Shadid and his team begin the delicate, minimally invasive surgery to alleviate the pain and help Pam begin a new life. Creating incisions that are a fraction of the size of traditional surgery, Dr. Shadid repairs the discs and bones surrounding the spine. This will alleviate pressure and create new stability in the back. Picture. I like the length, I like the location. I'm very, very happy with the way it looks like here. Placing rods and screws for stability and eliminating the movement between the lower vertebrae, Dr. Shadid creates a solid foundation around the spine, helping to eliminate the nerve irritation that creates the pain. I think this is a permanent fix. Once the bone heals, uh, we will, uh, she will not need nothing done. We don't need to make any adjustments. That fixes that segment where the problem was. But uh, those are, this is a permanent fix at that segment. That will not need any adjustments or any further treatment down the road. Another patient finding a surgical solution, Patrick Terry, arrives to have Dr. Schwab and his team perform a complex surgery to decrease Mr. Terry's essential tremor. This difficult disorder limits his ability to drink, speak, or even to complete other simple tasks. Today he undergoes deep brain stimulation, thanks to a movement disorders team that is one of the largest and most experienced in the Midwest. The brain's an electrical organ. And the general idea is that um, you can put an electrode and, in a very specific part of the brain and interrupt the abnormal circuitry in a disease state. And if you can figure out how the circuitry is working abnormally, you can try and modulate it with delivering an electrical signal. I just like to go out to dinner with my family and be able to eat, have dinner. You know, it's simple things, it sounds like, but to me it's really important. As he begins, Dr. Schwab and his team must drill through a small piece of Mr. Terry's skull. Then, a tiny wire is inserted to make sure that they are within a small area of the brain called the vim thalamus to disrupt the tremor. For the majority of surgery, Mr. Terry must be fully awake for the team to test the effectiveness of the device. We really need the patient's help to get it in the right place. The per person needs to be awake uh, to help me get it where it needs to be. Once that's done, the patient is sedated and we bury the electrode with a cap uh, underneath the scalp. With each fraction of a millimeter traveled by the wire, the surgeon listens to the distinct firing patterns of the neurons in the brain. What sounds like static are amplified discharges from small groups of neurons. By changing the firing patterns of these neurons with precise electric impulses, the tremor can also be disrupted without interfering with Mr. Terry's normal brain activity. You're doing great and it's all going well, so I know it's getting long for you, but you know, pretty soon we're going to be in the home stretch, so, okay? Okay. You're doing great. How's this tremor? I'm in. Still there? Still there. Okay, have him draw another spiral. X-ray. X-ray? And then you return to the guide to it, expose the tips. It's actually a bit better. A little bit. Finally, after hours of testing, a breakthrough is found. Hold your hand out. Okay. What do you think of that? <laughs> Amazingly, after four decades of shaking, doctors are able to nearly eliminate all evidence of tremor 
Even as they continue to test for side effects, Mr. Terry cannot believe what he is seeing. Most of the types of surgeries we do, we don't see the effects till we see the patient and follow up or they return to clinic. One of the nice things about this is we're able to see the effects in the operating room. It's not uncommon to have patients sitting there in the operating room staring at their hand, not able to believe how steady their hand is, uh, or even crying when they're able to write their name for the first time in 10 or 20 years. Perfect, we're done. You can go to sleep. Excellent job, Mr. Terry. Nice yeah, Mr. job. When we come back, Mr. Terry gets final programming of his device, and we'll see a new clinic that is helping to correct the balance problems of an aging population. If you'd like to watch episodes of Minds of Medicine at any time, go to henryford.com slash mindsofmedicine. These are the minds of medicine. This is their story. Right here at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital, neurologists, gerontologists, and ENT specialists collaborate for a unique approach to treating balance problems all under one roof. This program offers patients the ability to quickly discover solutions for balance issues caused from the diseases like Parkinson's, stroke, or Alzheimer's. In what normally would take weeks or months of appointments, Doctors here can deliver answers almost immediately, saving patients time and hassles. So you're here today for a balance clinic. Yes. And you know how it's set up. You first see me. I'm the internist and okay. geriatrician. So I'll deal with the medical aspects of what could cause balance trouble or falls. And then we will have a conference and we'll figure out what's going on and then someone will contact you. Okay, okay. great. All right, so why don't you tell me? Patients with imbalance are actually quite common. Traditionally, these patients are sent to um, an internist or a cardiologist to make sure their heart is okay, or they're sent to an ENT specialist to see if the inner ear is working right, and they're also sent to a neurologist. So rather than have the patient see all these multiple specialty uh, physicians, what we do is we uh, get all the physicians together and all the specialties together in one multidisciplinary clinic and have the patient come just one day or two sessions and we all of us investigate the patient talk to the patient try to figure out what's wrong with them and then we can uh, decide what's uh, the treatment to my knowledge there's, there's no other multidisciplinary balance clinic in uh, the state of Michigan mm -hmm. when you get up before you start to just walk across the room make sure you feel okay because you can always sit back down in that chair yeah, that's a good By the time you point. get to the middle of the room, it's too late. Over a period of a few hours, doctors examine all the possible causes of Ms. Tanaglia's imbalance. This includes multiple tests with an audiologist to determine how the inner ear may be involved. We do a test with the balance system itself where we put uh, temperature changed air, so warm air or cool air, in the person's ear and this stimulates the balance system in a, in a particular way and we can measure if the right one and the left one are doing the same because for balance we need good balance on the right and on the left. So that's all I have from the neurological side. Sheena, what did you find on your... Um, she, her vision is not fully corrected with her lenses so um, and she wears bifocals and, and sometimes she notices actually when she wears her bifocals she, she can't walk. They sent me for physical therapy and it did help. All the different exercises, walking up steps, either without my hands or not with my hands, standing on one foot, walking backwards, uh, turning around and going over, picking my feet up, walking over these little things on the floor. These exercises did help me. By my doing them all the time, it gave me a little more encouragement, and it helped me to understand how I had to do things instead of my old way. It helped me to know what I have to do to keep moving. I'm very grateful. The teamwork that helps balance patients like Ms. Tanaglia also helps patients like Pam Kenny. Months after her surgery at Henry Ford West Bloomfield, she is re-energized thanks to a life reclaimed from back pain. We're 15 months from surgery and 
I feel wonderful. It has changed my life completely. Um, I sleep through the night. I, I didn't sleep for years. I was up two or three times a night, you know, walking. Um, I'm active. I carry things. I pick things up. I don't complain all the time to my family about back pain. Um, I, my life is just completely different. It's amazing. It's, I didn't realize how much being in constant pain wears on you mentally, let alone physically. It's changed my perspective on back surgery because I feel like I'm one of the people that's a success story. And so I tell everyone that I talk to who complains of back pain that they really should get another opinion, especially people who have been told possibly by their doctor that, well, there's not really much we can do. Um, I say to them, I was there and I felt that way and look, look at how great I feel and look at the great positive outcome I've had. Weeks after his surgery, Patrick Terry returns to activate a device that could eliminate his essential tremor. Today he meets with his team to see if a lifetime of shaking can finally come under control. And so how have things been since Good. I saw you? Good. Uh, you've been through a lot and uh, looking forward to getting started today? Yes. All right. Yes, I am. This patient uh, is going to have programming, which means uh, changing the electrical signals to optimize control of symptoms, to use uh, the frequency and the amount of voltage uh, using the electrodes that were implanted in the brain to try and get the best results for him. Well, the electrode that you saw being put into the brain now has uh, the opportunity to be uh, adjusted to optimal settings so that the tremors, the slowness of movement, other features can be brought into better control, better than what medications can do by themselves. Can you hold out your, your arm like this? Very well. With this finger, touch your nose and touch my finger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you like that? Yeah. You think we're heading in the right direction? Nine yeah. hertz of nine hertz. And only a few weeks after programming, Mr. Terry is at home, amazed at the complete change in his life. I feel great. Uh, it's a world of difference. Uh, to be able to shave, to brush your teeth, to eat something I never never really thought I'd know again, you know. It's changed my outlook on life because I'm able to go into public and eat a meal. I can't thank them enough. They were professional. They made you comfortable. It changed my life. I think people are going to live longer. And they are living longer. And I think people will probably will have more problems, like spine problems or other problems, like with the knees and the joints and the hips. And I think the med medicine has to adjust and tailor its uh, treatments to those people, to their needs. We're going to have a different kind of generation. More and more people, as they are taking care of their health will live longer. So the average lifespan of the individual is going to be longer than what it is now. So a greater proportion of the patients will be older and living in good health and living a retired life. We're learning more and more about just what's normal, if that's even the, the best word to use. What's, what's good for patients as they age. And we want them to be safe and we want them to be active and, and uh, fulfilled. With improvements in technology and improvements of techniques, we're able to reduce the risks um, to the point that the benefits far outweigh them. And it's a very reasonable option for people to improve their length of life and quality of life. Although we can't avoid getting older, as we've seen, many aging and health issues can be made easier or even eliminated with the help of the right team. If you're struggling with back pain or balance problems, or if you've been diagnosed with a movement disorder like essential tremor, there may be a solution for you. To meet with a neurological expert, go to henryford.com 
or call 1-800-HENRY-FORD. We'll be right back with more Minds of Medicine. This is a new day. These are the Minds of Medicine. This is their story.